Welcome to Carly Tackles, redoing your pump hose with PVC piping. I started out with this project just wanting to find a way to help support all this weight that was pulling on the tubes and on the pool. After research, I found that these tubes, they crack after one or two years of being out in the sun. So I thought I'd try to find a way to solve that problem too. You're going to need one and a half inch PVC pipe. I had to purchase 10 feet because that was all that was available at any of the hardware stores. But if you can find a five footer, that's more than enough. You're also going to need a male adapter. This is two inch on one side, one and a half inch on the other, and the two inch side is threaded. You're going to need two 90 degree elbows. You're also going to need to me as a coupler, but they're called the flush uh, bushing, bushing. It's three quarter inch to one and a half. You're gonna need a PVC T, and this is one and a half on all sides. And you're gonna need a ball valve for your one and a half inch PVC pipe. This will replace the shutoff that you're using today. And then to con connect all your PVC pipes and hold them together, you're gonna need this little handy pack. It's a duo. And then if you have three quarter inch PVC, you just need a few inches. If you have to purchase it, a two foot would be fine. And then you can also use your spare for the next project that I'm doing on a skimmer. If you have to replace the pump hoses, they're about 20 bucks a piece, which means your cost is $40. To redo this all in PVC piping, it's gonna cost me $32.45. Your prices may vary. I start by closing this valve so water cannot get through, and I switch my filter to neutral. I am loosening the pipe clamps, but not removing the hose, just loosening a little bit, because I'm going to reach in there and pull out that suction piece when I have the plug. So I grab my pool plug, and I'm going to gently pull out the suction filter that's on the other side and put the plug in its place. I'm still not removing the hoses yet. This is the piece that I removed and replaced with that plug. I'm also gonna shut off the other valve. I probably should have done that sooner, but I did forget. And now I'm loosening the pipe clamp on the other side, and I will replace that filter with the plug. Now I can remove the hoses. Might have some water coming out of the hoses in the pool, but that plug should be in place on both of them. I need to measure to find the total distance apart for my new PVC piping. I grab my three quarter inch PVC pipe and sandpaper, and I'm gonna sand the edge of this. The little suction filter will go over three quarter inches. It just needs to be a hair skinnier than what it really is. So I'm gonna sand it down to fit in that little suction. Now I'm only gonna do this once. One side I'm going to replace with the original suction filter, and the other side I'm gonna build a skimmer to connect to it. So I'm only doing this on one side, but if you wanna return it back to its original glory, you would repeat this process. I'm using a PVC cutter to cut down this PVC pipe to fit. I only need so long for it to fit all the way through the pipe so I can get my other adapter on there. This is that uh, flush bushing bushing that does three quarter inch to one and a half. For the remaining three quarter inch PVC, I'm gonna measure three and a half inches and using those PVC cutters, I'm going to cut it. This is for my other side, the side that will have a homemade skimmer attached. I'm going to attach my skimmer using this three quarter inch coupler. It is not on the material list for this project, but it is on my skimmer. I'm just trying to show you how it's going to connect. And then you're gonna use your other three quarter inch, one and a half inch coupler bushing for this side. Your 90 degree elbows are gonna go right on that adapter on both sides. 
I laid out my PVC piping on the ground to those distance dimensions to help me break down how long my PVC pipes need to really be since I need to account for the T and the elbows. I thought it'd be fun to try using this PVC cutter on one and a half inch thick PVC. Uh, I knew that wouldn't work, but it was worth a shot. This is how I choose to cut PVC pipe. I like to use a hacksaw. Now this blade is all purpose. It is designed for PVC as well as wood. After every cut, I take sandpaper to the edge and smooth it down, getting all those loose filaments from the PVC gone and out of the way. We want clean, nice ends on our PVC piping. And I repeat the process for the next slide, measuring out the length, marking it, and then I will take the hacksaw and cut it. Now it's starting to take shape. I take it over to my pool and check the distance. Are these little holes lined up? If it's too long, cut down your PVC a little. If it's too short, looks like you're cutting a new piece. Back to cutting some more PVC. I need to cut a piece that will go into the T and into the ball valve. I didn't measure. I just knew any piece would do. You don't want it too long that you eventually run this thing into the ground, um, but this is like five to eight inches long somewhere in there, and it's not gonna hit the ground, so I don't have to worry about it. Take it over to my T-valve, then I'm using my ball valve there, and that's kind of what we're doing. And I open and close it just for giggles, make sure the thing works. I did test it in the store before purchasing. Now we need to cut another piece that's gonna go into the ball valve. The one and a half inch to two inch male adapter will go in at the other end. The hose that came with your filter that went to that shutoff valve has two inch threaded adapter. It should fit right on the bottom. We did our dry fit test. Now it's ready to take it all apart and permanently attach it. You wanna clean out the ends of your PVC pipe, make sure there's no dirt or anything in there. And I had a little trouble opening these. It's nothing a pair of channel locks can't solve. You're gonna first apply the purple wear gloves, the stuff runs and stains. I recommend doing this over something you don't mind staining. So I'm just going slow and not and rolling the little applicator all the way around the PVC. And then this clear part is what activates it. The instructions say to, when you put it into the PVC, to push it all the way in and give it like a little turn and then hold for 30 seconds and you'll feel it lock in there too but you want to be sure you're holding it in place and that's what we're going to do for everything this is permanent the only way to undo this is to cut your pvc pipe so be sure everything fits and is where you want it before you apply this stuff this is one of the reasons i have this laid out on the grass the way i do so I don't have to worry about which end, what things connects. It is laid out the way I want to assemble it. Less likely I accidentally glue something that I shouldn't together. After I connect this T, I'm going to stop playing with this piece and I'm going to work on the sides. I don't want to have too much stuff going on, working the small pieces before I attach them together.
when I have the one side done, I lay out the other side the way I want to glue it and I start working on that. Noticing I'm not gluing those sides to that T yet. My biggest concern is that I glue them at a wrong angle. So I'm going to be very careful about doing that. I'm even doing a dry fit first and I take it over to the pool to test my angles. As it turns out, I had my signs messed up. Notice in the image right now, you see the long PVC pipe on the left, but when I lay it on the bricks, the long PVC pipe's on the right. So not only was I worried about the angles, I had my sides mixed up. If you're doing both of those suction filters on both sides, you don't have to worry about that. But I do because I'm gonna add a skimmer to the one side. I set up some blocks to help hold the pipe in place. This is just to help me make sure I keep my angles and I very carefully place that pipe in there. I want to be careful not to turn it too far one way. You know, the instructions tell you to turn it a quarter inch. I didn't do that. I pushed and held. I didn't want to risk it not being at the right angle. When installing this, turn your ball valve to off. I'm going to start by slightly loosening or tightening the pipe clamps to kind of help support the weight of the PVC. I am not pushing this all the way through. I still have that plug on the other side, but keep your screwdriver handy. I think mine's in my teeth currently. If you accidentally push too hard on that PVC, you're gonna push that plug out. And you can see that happened on the right. I just quickly tighten that pipe clamp over the PVC and it's installed now. And I continue on my way trying to tie this up. I'm using one of those duct hangers that's plastic that normally is nailed into one of your rafters and it holds the PVC pipe on the hook. I hooked the frame of the pool and I'm using twine to help support it. I'm gonna come up with a better way to help do this in the future. I just haven't thought it through. So for now, I'm going to use twine. You can see I pushed a little too hard and I started leaking water on the left. I'll address that. I grab that suction filter for that sign and I'm going to remove the plug, push that PVC pipe all the way through, it's that three quarter inch, and now I'm working that suction filter over that three quarter inch. And it kind of goes through that black nozzle. And now I'm going to tighten that pipe clamp around that suction filter again. And that should keep the water from going out. I wasn't finished with all of my support twine before that started leaking, so I'm gonna get back to work on supporting the PVC pipes. I really wanna keep that weight off those black tubes that come out of the pool. That was one of the main things I wanted to accomplish with the old setup too. Here is a closer look at my duct hook. You can see how I have that twine strapped all kinds of ways around that thing. Here is the other side that the skimmer is going to connect to. Last step. I had a rubber washer lying around that fits this diameter. If you don't, you can buy gasket rubber like sheets at your local hardware store and you can cut one out to fit. I'm placing this little rubber ring inside of the standard hose and I'm going to screw that on to that male adapter. All right, let's open the valve, check for leaks. Let's go muscles, there you go. I checked everything over, looking for possible leaks. It's almost time to turn back on the pump and see how it does when you have water really being pushed and sucked through it. Before you do that, don't forget to open up your other valve, the one that pushes the water out on the other side, because remember we turn that off. And then you should be able to turn your pump back on and give it a real test drive. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you'd like to see more videos similar to this, please subscribe to my channel, Carly Tackles DIY Tools and Gadgets Tips and Tricks. And make sure you hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new content.